Hey everybody, this is David from Art Music and More, and today we're going to talk about how an oscillator on a synthesizer creates the sound that you hear. So I'm using a Behringer Model D, and you might think it would make sense to actually put the Model D on the video, but the problem is we're just going to be hitting keys, so it's not really going to do anything for us. So we're going to be looking at the computer screen most of the time instead, I'm going to be using Ardor to take a look at the waveforms as they're created, and we'll see how it goes. So what I've done with this is I've turned an oscillator down. Not quite as low as it can go, but I've turned the number one oscillator down with no filtering on the Behringer Model D. We're going to play it at a really slow rate, the lowest C on my mini keyboard. We're going to move it up a little bit at a time and see what happens. An oscillator at its most basic core functioning is basically a resistor, a capacitor, and then an op amp. And the resistor keeps current from going through until it reaches a certain um, strength. And past that, the current can go through. So it works kind of like a dam. And a capacitor is like a battery. It takes in current until it fills up. Unlike a battery, it just discharges everything immediately. And this is how the sound for an oscillator is produced, and then it's sent through an op amp, and it's basically recycled. So by varying the size of the resistor, by varying the size of the capacitor, you can control the frequency or speed at which it oscillates. And if it's oscillating within the range of human hearing, which is about 20 beats, 20 cycles per second, up to about 20,000 cycles per second, then we're going to perceive that as a note somewhere in that range, right? So without further ado, I'm going to play this with an oscillator at a very low setting. And by the way, if you hear noise in the background, I'm going to try to filter it out. But the fan on my new laptop, way noisier than I expected. So uh, I'll see if I can filter that out. And by the way, one of the complaints about the Behringer Model D was actually that the oscillators are noisy. I mean, that they are that the synth itself is noisy. So be listening for that also. Do you hear any noise generated by the synth outside of just the sound of the capacitors? So here's how capacitors sound discharging at a very slow rate in an oscillator. It doesn't sound very musical, does it? And you can kind of see here that I don't have the traditional type of like really nice waveform that I like to see in music. Let's see if I can zoom up on that a little bit and give you a better view. Oh, wrong way. So we're going to go back, take a look. And if it doesn't keep moving on me, haha, <laughs> it's going to keep moving on me. Okay, we're going to do that. We're going to move back and take a look at this. So that's what I have, just basically oscillators discharging and, you know, creating that kind of noise of an electrical discharge. So basically what happens, and the reason you have it going both up and down, is you have compression, which is where the charge is positive, and it pushes the speaker. You can actually see my speakers pump in this studio. And by the way, don't turn this up really loud. I wouldn't want you to damage your speakers. Also, there's rarefaction, which is the negative side of a pressure wave or an electrical current where it dips into a negative and the speaker pulls back in before hitting the night <laughs> the speaker pulls back in before hitting the next cycle and pushing back out again. So let's move this up an octave and listen. So that should be about double the speed because every octave in music is a doubled uh, frequency on our so that should be about double the speed because every octave in music is a doubled frequency. So to go from C in one octave to C in the next octave, I double the frequency. So let's move this up another octave and hear it. Now things are starting to get more interesting. We're moving up another octave. There's our original octave. Now let's move up one more. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's the point where I'm pretty much kind of hearing the note come in. Let's move it up another octave and see. So here's the octave we just played. 
Now here's the next octave. We're definitely getting some kind of note pattern going. Now the next. Well, that's kind of cool. I can start playing a tune at that point. Yeah, I'm just hitting the keys. So let's go up an octave more. Another octave. So it has a glitchy sort of sound, kind of like a video game music, right? The old video game 8-bit stuff. Um, basically because there's not as much information there with the oscillator. It's just on and then off. Now the ways I can change that are to move it faster and to smooth it. Now I can smooth it with filtering and then I can use a low frequency oscillator to control the filter sweep in and out. I can use high pass and low pass filters and band pass filters to change the sound. We'll get into more of that later. But I just wanted you to get a good idea of how sound works and what's going on with a synth like the Behringer Model D when you're playing it it all starts with this. It all starts with the oscillator and the basic waveform it makes. We're going to look at this some more in other videos um, using different tools, so stay tuned. Uh, by the way, hit like if you liked this video. If you really liked this video, please subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell and choose all so that you can get notifications of all my new videos coming out. I'm going to put links in the bottom to ways to contact me, like my Patreon page. Please consider becoming a patron and helping fund these videos. I'll have other materials available for people on my Patreon account as I get it going. And, you know, feel free to reach out if you have any questions, you have any comments. I'd be glad to hear from you. Thank you. Have a great day.